Hey everybody, welcome back. I got a marker review today. It's a little bit of an old one, so old in fact they don't make it anymore, but that's okay, you can still get them used. So today we're going to take a look at the BTSA-17. Now the BTSA-17 is a 12 gram powered spring-fed pistol. This marker is actually pretty straightforward. Internally, it's essentially just a PMI piranha. So in terms of the operation, you have your bolt up here, your hammer and valve down here, to operate the marker, you have to cock it, make sure the safety is off, and then you pull the trigger and you're good. Very simple, very straightforward. Because this is based on such a familiar platform, it's very reliable and the maintenance is very simple. You can just push this pin right here, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you remove this pin, and then you can slide the entire bolt and hammer assembly out the back of the marker for cleaning, and with a few more screws, you can remove the frame and access the valve. It's very straightforward, very simple, because again, this is a very familiar platform. However, because this is based on the Piranha platform, it has a few quirks that other similar markers don't have. For example, it uses the silly PMI slide safety mechanism instead of the more familiar push button safety mechanism. It works great as a safety. The problem is when you remove the grip frame or the grip panels, it's fairly easy to lose the little spring and ball bearing that actually hold this system together. So it works fine, but you have to be very careful not to lose the parts that allow it to work. The other thing that you get from using this very familiar platform is that this marker is quite a bit larger than other spring-fed 12 gram powered pistols. The reason for this is really on the back end of the marker. This has the full-size Piranha bolt. It's a fairly long bolt. Most markers like this use a much shorter bolt, meaning that the overall length of the marker can be shorter, and the feed tube, instead of facing backwards from the feed neck, actually faces forwards out over the barrel. But again, because this is the familiar Piranha platform, it's laid out a little bit differently, so you get a little different layout compared to other similar markers. That being said, this marker, compared to your full-size marker with a hopper and an air tank, is extremely compact and extremely light. It's quite large for this type of platform, a 12-gram powered pistol, but overall it's a small, light marker. Now the two most important things with a marker like this are going to be the reloading and the 12-gram changing. How quickly and efficiently can you do those two things because you're potentially going to have to do them on the field. So let's take a look. We'll start with reloading paint. Now this is a spring-fed marker, so your paint goes in this feed tube right here, and it is fed with the spring. So to reload this paintball marker, if you're out of paint, the first thing you have to do is retract the spring. You do that just like I just did. You grab onto this little knob right here and slide it backwards, and then put it in that little notch so it locks in place. Once the spring is retracted and locked, you can open the feed port right here, you do this by rotating the front plug. It has this little handle bit right here. So the best way i found to do this is to grab onto it and use the marker for leverage uh, because it is very snug and hard to turn. So it's much easier if you use the marker as a lever rather than trying to turn the plug itself. So you grab it, turn the marker, open it up. Now you have accessed the feed tube. You can take your tube of paint and drop it in there. You'll notice that it has this collar, which is really nice. You can jam the tube right into the collar. You don't have to worry about holding the tube over at just the right angle to get the paintballs in. So you stick the tube in that collar, load them up, then being very careful not to drop any paintballs, you close the feed plug. Once the feed plug is closed, you can release the spring and it'll put tension on that stack of paintballs and feed them for you when you operate the marker. Now, in contrast to other markers like this, this feed system is not bad at all. The main advantage you have compared to other things, whether it's something like a PT Extreme or a, a Squall from Palmer's Pursuit Shop, is that you don't need to remove any plug in order to reload the feed tube. You're just twisting rather than removing. The twisting is generally a faster method, and also it means you don't have to worry about losing anything that you're taking off the marker during the process of reloading the feed tube. There are faster methods of doing this, but they generally involve modding the marker. For example, you can drill a hole back here, so you don't have to mess with opening the plug at all. You can just retract the spring, put the paint in the back, and then engage the spring again. And that's even faster, but again, it involves modding the marker itself. 
Now the feed tube here is actually removable. And you can replace it with a normal elbow if you want to attach a hopper. You do that by pressing this button here, which uh, moves a little latch that allows you to slide the feed tube off of the rail where it's attached. You can't actually do that on this marker right now because out of the box, the feed tube is a little bit rickety. It doesn't sit very snugly. It works just fine, but it's a little bit loose. So I drilled a couple of holes and I'm using two set screws to hold the tube in place more securely. So in order to remove this particular tube, you'd have to remove the set screws, then push the little button and slide it off. Now in terms of the 12 gram changes, this marker has gone through two iterations. Initially, this marker had one of the quickest and easiest 12 gram changes of any marker of this type. But that system could be operated in a dangerous way, so there was a recall and the revised system is really slow and cumbersome and frankly terrible to the point where I wouldn't want to have to change a 12 gram cartridge in game. So let me show you how this works. It's a little bit different from most other markers like this. Most of the time you're going to have some kind of plug that you twist uh, and then remove and put the 12 gram in. This is basically like a trap door mechanism. So you grab onto this rail right here and open it up and that's where the 12 gram cartridge goes. So you take your 12 gram, this one's spent, take your 12 gram, stick it in there. This might take a second because of that new cumbersome system. Oh, it's so slow. Okay, so you get the 12 gram in there. You have to kind of slide the little latches around so that uh, you can close the door. So you try to do that. There we go. Okay, now once you have the 12 gram in place, the door will close about to there. And then you got to give it a nice smack to make sure that you pierce the 12 gram securely rather than doing it slowly, which could cause the 12 gram to, to leak around a weak seal with the pierce assembly. Once the 12 gram is spent, you just open the door. Now with the old system, you had two of these longer clips in the middle here, those longer plastic ones. And if there was any juice at all left in the 12 gram, when you open the door, the 12 gram would basically pop out. And that was great, except if you open the door with a full 12 gram, it's going to rock it out and that could be dangerous. So they recalled that old system and replaced it with this one where you have one of those longer clips and then two of these shorter ones that wrap around the 12 gram to a greater degree. These shorter clips are extremely secure, but it makes it really hard to get the 12 gram out. You know what? I'm not even going to bother. We're just going to keep going. Pretend I got the 12 gram out. It's a really cumbersome system with the recall parts. Uh, I know a lot of people that have used this that have removed those parts, but technically you're not supposed to do that because it could be dangerous, but that is one way to deal with that problem. Now, another interesting feature of this marker is the barrel. The barrel is actually two parts and it is removable. So the first part is this little front right here, which is actually auto cocker threaded. So you can put any cocker threaded barrel on there as a front. And then the second part is this sleeve. It's just an insert. You can actually see it has a bore on it. This is the 688 bore, uh, but they also make, I believe, 684 and 680. As far as I know, you can only get the replacement bores in the kind of rifle kit that was available for some time with this marker. That included a dummy 12 gram with a bottom line setup. It included the barrel inserts and a mock suppressor for the front. I don't think you could get those inserts as a standalone thing, although I imagine that would be fairly popular for users of this marker, uh, but it's an interesting system to have. Unfortunately, this insert system is not compatible with freak inserts. The sleeves are too thick and too short for you to be able to fit a freak insert in there, so you have to use their specific inserts. Now another important question with markers like this is efficiency. How many shots can you get out of a 12 gram cartridge? And when I used this marker, I was getting about 20 usable shots out of a 12 gram. It was actually about 22 or 23. So the rule of thumb is that every two tubes of paint, you switch 12 gram cartridges, or about every 20 shots. One more feature of this marker that I'll discuss is the flush cocking system. And that just means that when the marker is being operated, uh, it's closed from the outside. There's no moving parts or exposed parts to the outside environment. So as I showed you before, you cock the marker by retracting this piece, it goes back into place. And when you fire the marker, nothing moves externally which is really nice. It means that when you're playing, no dirt, mud, or grime is gonna get in there. No paint is going to get in there during a game. And that 
allows it to be more reliable because you're less likely to get something in there that's going to gunk up the works and prevent the marker from operating. So that's not something that you see all the time, but it is a nice system to have. Now, as I said, this marker is no longer available new. When it was new, I think it was like 80, 90, maybe 120 bucks when it was brand new. Uh, but you can get these used fairly readily from the 50 to 60 dollar range uh, without too much trouble. So, overall impressions of the BT SA17, it's a perfectly serviceable 12 gram powered spring fed pistol. It's not great. It has a couple of quirks like the layout that makes it a little bit longer and heavier than your average marker like this. And the 12 gram changing is really, really terrible with the revised clip system. So on those grounds alone, I cannot continue using this marker. It just is not viable to be able to change 12 grams in game. That being said, it does have a number of nice features such as the barrel sizing inserts, which is unique for a marker like this, and the closed operating system that keeps the insides cleaner than your average paintball marker. So that's the BT SA17. Thanks for watching. See you soon.